me talk about a category of things. The most advanced phones are called smartphones, so they say. And uh, they typically combine a phone plus some email capability, plus they say it's the internet, sort of the baby internet in the one device. And they all have these plastic little keyboards on them. Uh, and uh, the problem is that they're not so smart and they're not so easy to use. So if you kind of make a you know, business school 101 graph of the smart axis and the easy to use axis, phones, regular cell phones are kind of right there. They're not so smart and they're you know, not so easy to use. Um, but smartphones are definitely a little smarter, but they actually are harder to use. They're really complicated. Just for the basic stuff, people have a hard time figuring out how to use them. Well, we don't want to do either one of these things. What we want to do is make a LeapFrog product that is way smarter than any mobile device has ever been and super easy to use. This is what iPhone is. Okay? So we're going to reinvent the phone. Now we're going to start with a revolutionary user interface. It is the result of years of research and development. And of course, it's an interplay of hardware and software. Now, why do we need a revolutionary user interface? I mean, here's four smartphones, right? Motorola Q, the BlackBerry, Palm Treo, Nokia E62, the usual suspects. And what's wrong with their user interfaces? Well, the problem with them is really sort of in the bottom 40 there. It's, it's this stuff right here. They all have these keyboards that are there whether you need them or not to be there. And they all have these control buttons that are fixed in plastic and are the same for every application. Well, every application wants a slightly different user interface, a slightly optimized set of buttons just for it. And what happens if you think of a great idea six months from now? You can't run around and add a button to these things. They're already shipped. So what do you do? It doesn't work because the buttons and the controls can't change. They can't change for each application, and they can't change down the road if you think of another great idea you want to add to this product. Well, how do you solve this? Hmm. It turns out we have solved it. We solved it in computers 20 years ago. We solved it with a bitmap screen that could display anything we want, put any user interface up, and a pointing device. We solved it with the mouse, right? We solved this problem. So how are we going to take this to a mobile device? Well, what we're going to do is get rid of all these buttons and just make a giant screen. A giant screen. Now, how are we going to communicate this? We don't want to carry around a mouse, right? So what are we going to do? Oh, a stylus, right? We're going to use a stylus. No. <laughs> now, who wants a stylus? You have to get them and put them away, and you lose them. Yuck. Nobody wants a stylus. So let's not use a stylus. We're going to use the best pointing device in the world. We're going to use a pointing device that we're all born with. We're born with 10 of them. We're going to use our fingers. We're going to touch this with our fingers. And we have invented a new technology called multi-touch, which is phenomenal. It works like magic. You don't need a stylus. It's far more accurate than any touch display that's ever been shipped. It ignores unintended touches. It's super smart. You can do multi-finger gestures on it. And boy, have we patented it. <laughs> so, so we've been very lucky to have brought a few revolutionary user interfaces to the market in our time. First was the mouse. The second was the click wheel. And now we're going to bring multi-touch to the market. And each of these revolutionary user interfaces has made possible a revolutionary product. The Mac, the iPod, and now the iPhone. And so rather than talk about this some more, let me show it to you. Alrighty. Now, I've got some special, 
special iPhones up here. They've got a little special board in them, and a, so I can get some digital video out. And I got a little cord here, which goes up to these projectors, and uh, so I got some great images, and you get to see what it really looks like. So let me—I've got a camera here, so you can see what I'm doing with my finger for a few seconds, and uh, let me go ahead and get that picture within picture up. I'm going to go ahead and just push the sleep wake button. And there we go, right there. And to unlock the phone, I just take my finger and slide it across. All right? You want to see that again? Go to sleep. We wanted something that you couldn't do by accident in your pocket, and just slide it across. Boom. And this is the home screen of iPhone right here. And so if I want to get in the iPod, I just go down that lower right-hand corner and push this icon right here, and boom, I'm in the iPod. I want to get home, I push the home button right here, and I'm home. Back in the iPod. I'm back in the iPod. Now here I am. You can see five buttons across the bottom: playlists, artists, songs, videos, and more. I'm an artist right now. Well, how do I scroll through my list of artists? How do I do this? I just take my finger and I scroll. That's it. Isn't that cool? Get a little rubber banding up when I run off the edge. And if I want to pick somebody, let's say I want to pick the Beatles, I just tap them. And here's the Beatles songs with their albums right here. If I want to play Sgt. Pepper's, I just hit Sgt. Pepper's right there. And uh, you know, a little help for my friends. Look at this gorgeous album artwork here. Of course, I got a volume control. Now I've got a little button up in the corner right here. You can see in the upper right-hand corner, I can hit that and flip the album art around. Here's all the other songs back here. And I can play Lovely Rita if I want to. Flip it back around. Very simple. All right, I can set some stars back here just by setting the arrows. Right, that's a five-star album. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it's pretty nice. Now. Let me show you something else. I just take my unit here and I turn it landscape mode. Oh, look what happens. I'm in cover flow. Well, let's go into Dylan here. Let's play like a Rolling Stone. The other thing I can do is uh, I can take any of these pictures and uh, I can make them bigger. And uh, so let me go ahead and get the camera back up. Yeah, there it is right there. I can, uh, I can just take my fingers and I can, we call it the pinch. I can bring them closer together or move them further apart to make it bigger or smaller. And so I can just move them further apart and stretch the image. Isn't that cool? And move it around. Isn't that cool? Now, how does this stack up? Let's go back to, to these guys. Let's take a look. Well, these are their, these are their home screens. And uh, again, as you recall, this is iPhone's home screen. Um, this, this is what their contacts look like. This is what iPhone's contacts look like. And again, you just pick one, and you see everything about that person, all the information you have. This is what mail looks like on these smartphones. Again, this is what mail looks like on iPhone. You have rich. HTML rich text email. This is what calendars look like on these guys. That's what calendars look like on iPhone. This is what the web looks like. And we tried to make it look as good as we could on these. It usually looks worse. And this is what you get. And uh, of course, this is what you get on iPhone. And you can zoom in and see anything you want. And this is what you get for music players. Nobody really uses them much. Uh, and this is what you get on iPhone. So after today, I don't think anyone's going to look at these phones quite the same way again.